Right, guys, well, something a little bit different this week. I've uh, I left home about five o'clock this morning and I've traveled down to the beautiful south coast of New South Wales to a town called Berry. Now, a few of you guys who have been watching a few other channels or might follow Lawn Solutions Australia have probably pieced together where I am today. So today, what I'm actually, uh, what I've done is I've, I've actually been down here this morning, I've been asked to do a podcast. So Joe Rogers, who's hiding in the background, he's about to make an appearance right now. How's that? That's all right, hey, right on cue. How you going, mate? Good, mate. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming down. That's all right. It. It's a beautiful part, of, beautiful part of the world you've got here. We're very lucky. Uh, it's a really hot day today. We're 36 here today, but it doesn't normally get like this. It's quite humid. It, it's actually really, really humid. Yeah. So for me at home in Scone, like we get humidity down in the single figures or maybe teens yep. here. I don't know. What is it? Oh, I don't know what it is. Heaps. A lot. Very it's, high. It's... But it's yeah. good. We're not normally like this, but you've come down on a good day. It's not windy, it's not raining. So no, it's it's actually actually a really, really nice day. So we've come down today, as I said earlier, to do a podcast. So that should be live in the coming, I don't know, period of time, yeah, sometime weeks. soon. Yep. They ran out of A-listers, so they went to reserve grade and they found <laughs> me. Um, but today I thought what we'd do is, Joe's been kind enough to sort of show us around. Mm -hmm. He's going to tell us a bit about yep. what Lawn Solutions is or yep. who Lawn Solutions is. Yep. Um, he's going to also show us a new variety of zoysia, which is the... Zoysia australis. Australis. We'll see it very soon. Yep. yep. Uh, and then behind us here, we've got varying degrees of zoysia in the, in the Sir Grange. Yes. Uh, that on the green may or may not be... It's Primo Zoysia. Primo Zoysia. On the green, which yep. you have at home. Um, and we've got another probably 40 different types of Zoysia grass, another right. 30 different types of buffalo, so we're of gonna, yeah. So we're going to get a little bit of a look around today? Absolutely, we'll do it now. But I guess what we should do is tell us a bit about Lawn Solutions. Okay, so for those that don't know, Lawn Solutions is a national network of turf farmers. So there's 45 in our group at the moment now. So they're individually owned, individually run for about 95% of them family run businesses, okay. second, sometimes third generation turf farmers who are members of Lawn Solutions Australia. So they're not owned or run or anything by Lawn Solutions, yep. they're purely members. And by being members, they get access to our turf products, which are Sir Walter DNA certified, yep. Tiff Tough, Sir Grange Zoysia, and a bunch of others. So our main role on behalf of those farmers is to market these products to yep. the end user, as you've you know, your, your viewers are, are probably aware. Uh, the other part of what we do is what we're standing on is we yep. are the, the research and development arm on behalf of these members around Australia. So we're lucky enough, we get to travel to a lot of weird and wonderful places around the world. And is we that when to... you get discovered overseas? <laughs> no, that wasn't true. <laughs> That wasn't true. You're getting told lies again. <laughs> uh, we get to go to places like America. Famous this no, bloke. No. And we import the cultivars that they breed in the yep. US, mainly at uh, universities like the University of Georgia, but also private institutions as well. They breed turf grasses. Yeah, and nice. we get to bring them into Australia and we send them out to our members. We say, hey, we'll do our work here. You tell us what ones you like. And eventually uh, they may come to market, which is pretty much how Tiff Tough, Sir Grange, and our Australis have originated. Yeah, nice, yeah. nice. So uh, we're going to start today at our research and development facility. Yep. It's the largest of its kind in the Southern Hemisphere. Uh, yeah, so right. we've got a lot of cultivars here. We're up north of 100 different turf grass cultivars here now. We'll see a fair few on this video. So, so you've got things here that you don't necessarily sell, but they're here for maybe assessment or consideration yeah. or, or Consideration is a word. Yep. When we import grasses, you can't just import one or two. We import a whole lot. Yep. And the winner of that bunch makes it to market. So we've got a lot here that are not commercially commercially available anywhere in the world. Yep. Uh, they're purely on a research nice. uh, a research license here. So um, what we've done first is, as you can probably see behind us here, is these are grasses that are available to the end user now. Yep. And we've made obviously a mini a mini golf hole here. The issue we had before because we had all these wonderful grasses and people would come and have a look at it and say, oh, I want that one. We yep. go, well, we can't buy it. Yeah, right. um, so we've made a display with all the grasses that are available. Nice. Uh, so we've got zoysia. The prominent yep. zoysia here is Sagrange zoysia. So that's, this is it here, but unmown. That's almost five years unmown now. Yep. Never been mown, never been whippersnipped. And it's just a nice buffer. Um, it's good for areas um, that are difficult to mow or batters and that sort of thing. Uh, and then we've got it cut uh, at about 14 mil on our yes. little makeshift tee there. And then as we walk through our fairway here, this is a Tiff Tough fairway. Yep. Um, it's a little bit scalped around the outside where we've taken the height down a little bit just today. Just a height reset. Just a height reset. Yep. And here we cut with a cylinder mower down here at about 14 mil. Yeah, nice. Uh, it's due for a mower again now. It might even be lower. It might be 12 mil now. It's due for another cut now. And then you'll see a little barrier here, but we jump from Tiff Tough uh, back onto a Sagrain Zoysia 
I guess you'd call it green surround. Yes. Cut with a cylinder mower nice and low here and then rotary a little bit higher and then a bit longer again, uh, unmown on the outside. It's um, a really nice tight sort of a grass, isn't it? Yeah, it's dense. We've, yeah. um, we've just hit these with Primo uh, PGR in the last little bit of time. It's yep. tightened them right up, but once established like it is now, it's turf harvester coming in the background now. Um, once established like it is now, it's a it's a beautiful grass to walk on. Yeah, no, touch. It's, it is. It's a bit temperamental. Uh, yep. You've got to be watching it. You've got to be pretty diligent with it. But when you get it right, it's beautiful. It, it's so beautiful. would it be class as an enthusiast grass or would it be more for anyone? Or uh, it depends on your, your, depends on your climate. Yep. Uh, if you're sort of Brisbane north, it's for anyone because it yep. just grows well enough up there. Yep. If you're south of that line, you've got to be pretty into your lawn to get yep. the most out of Sagrange. Yep. Once it's established, you know, you can leave it unmown and it looks great. Yep. Uh, but if you want to keep it tight and keep it looking good, you got to be into your grass. Uh, so what okay. would be the minimum height you'd recommend having this? If you were a cylinder mowing in a home lawn? I wouldn't go under 10. Right. Uh, people do take it under that, but yep. it just tends to open up a little bit right. once you get below 10. Yep. There are other cultivars, other zoysies, other cooches uh, that like it a little bit yep. lower. But this, if you hover around the 12 to 14 mark, which is what this is now, yep. I think it's perfect. Yeah, no, it's, yep. it's, it's quite nice. Mm, it's good. And then once we move up, um, we hop onto something a little bit unique. It's still a a research cultivar. We get a lot of questions about it, but this is Primo Zoysia, which you have at your place. So, you, I've never actually said what I've got. Oh, haven't you? No. So, exclusive. it's now, <laughs> I can't get in trouble for saying what it is. Oh, I don't know if I'm allowed to say it. Ah. We'll put a beep over it. No, we won't. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's, there it's, you go. It's Primo Zoysia M85. We cut this. It needs a cut now. We cut this at uh, three mil at the moment uh, to replicate a golf green. It's it's a great grass for winter colour. Um, it does get a little bit puffy, uh, yes. so you've got to keep on top of it. We scarify this pretty regularly, but for a low maintenance golf putting surface, um, it's it's you know and it's it is great. I can I can contest that it is yeah. low maintenance. Yeah. Because I don't always get the chance to regularly mow. Yeah. Being shift work. But this this handles it, it doesn't look compared like it's compared to your cooch that you yeah, have. Compared there. to the yeah. cooch, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but um, it's a beautiful tight service. We PGR this as well, just to try and keep on top of it. Uh, but it needs a cut again now. Uh, like I said, three mil, it's pretty tight uh, for a zoysia grass. This is the first zoysia grass they've got down to what they call um, PGR ball speed wow. green. So okay. it's, yeah, right. it's doing a lot of good things around the world. We're not sure what will happen with it now. It's still in its research phase. So if you hear the word primo, don't ring your local turf farm and ask for it. <laughs> uh, it's only available from one farm around Australia at the moment. and. It'll probably be kept that way. We don't know yet. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's early, early days. So yep. for now, enjoy it on the channel. Enjoy it on the channel. That's <laughs> right. Or come and visit you. Or they can come and visit us in Berry yep. and they can see it. Seven days a week. It's order. It's order seven days a week. So, so what's happening here, mate? So we move away from our display down here and we come up to our research part of our plots here. So yep. what you're seeing here is... 22 different types of zoysia grass replicated twice. I mean here is in this section this, here. This one yep. here, yep. This was our last import. So right. when they come up with new grasses, the universities, they say, here you go. You can't say, no, I want that, that, that. You've got to take them all. Take the bunch. So we bring them here. We plant them here in Berry. We send some to Victoria, some to Maitland, some to Brisbane, some to Cairns. So you cover far and wide. We try and cover as many climates as we possibly yep. can through our network. We don't want to have a grass that's really, really good in Berry but terrible in Maitland, terrible in Victoria, terrible yep. in Cairns. So yep. we try and cast a wide net of climates uh, to get that sorted. We run this process for about, these are about five years old now. Okay. Um, Australis is in this trial, the one right. that we're just about to bring to yep. market. It's over there. It's just been a standout in pretty much every category across the board. We can't say no to it. So um, the name Australis, it wasn't from Australia, but you've gone with that name. No, we're going with that name. It's a Zoysia japonica, yes. uh, which are native to Southeast Asia. All zoysias are native to Southeast Asia, bar zoysia macarantha, right. which is an Australian native. Yep. It's a bit of a controversial thing, whether it's right. native or whether it isn't, but it, it is. Uh, so all these are japonicas and matrellas, mm -hmm. uh, or there's some zoysia hybrids in here where they actually cross matrellas and japonicas okay. together. Yeah, right. So very, yep. very technical yep. stuff. But this is all but, not defunct now, but we just mow these now. We right. don't analyze these anymore, really. We've spent the last few years doing that, so we feel like we're at the end of this part now. But so moving away from the zoysia now, yep. and on the different end of the spectrum, we've got some buffalo grasses here, some St. Augustines. Now, these are only planted in December. They're out of Texas A&M, which is a breeding institution in Texas, the yep. university. 
So we've got a pretty good buffalo grass now, we think, in Sir Walter DNA certified. It's been out for a long, long time, but we're looking for something that's 30, 40% better, not just yep. a fraction better. Right, so substantially. Substantially yeah. different. We have a thing, uh, it's a pretty layman's term, but it's called the 30 for 30 test. Yep. We're looking for a grass that looks better from 30 metres away, travelling at 30 kilometres an hour. It's got to be a standout. Yeah, right. So yep. we've got a couple here we like, but we're mainly looking for improved cold tolerance. Obviously, okay. Sir Walter goes dormant um, yep. pretty significantly in parts of New South Wales, SA, Vic. Yep. Uh, so we're looking for something with improved cold tolerance. And there's a big thing at the moment with, they call it buffalo yellow disease. I don't know if your audience is super familiar with it. It's mainly a production issue right. where buffalo grasses are getting pretty bad disease on farm. Oh, right. It's not transplanting, so it's yep. fine in the marketplace. But from a producer point of view, we're looking for something with uh, improved disease resistance, I guess yeah, you'd okay. say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. So what we've done here with the zoysia grasses, we'll do now with the buffaloes over the next right. few years. They're already in Melbourne, Cairns, Brisbane. Maitland. Yep. Uh, so we're going to sort of run through the same process. We can walk yeah, sweet. straight over the top of them. They're just being sprayed. And So these are all just codes? These are all just codes, yeah. Yep. The only one that's commercially available now is we put Sir Walter DNA in oh, here yeah. as yep. a control yeah, right. uh, to yep. compare them. But you can see here, if we look at this grass, the growing speed from that compared to the one you're standing on, they're yep. talking cheese. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, same rate, same day, same everything. So how, what? just one piece was planted? or? Nah, nah nine. I guess sprigs or yep. runners yep. per the meter, and there's four replicants here because right. growing conditions there can vary totally different right. to growing conditions yes. there. So okay. we like to put replicants in, replicates, replicants, yes. replicas, replicates. Um, but yeah, you can just see the differences between cultivars here. It's pretty exciting to see. So yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll watch this, and you know, in five, ten years' time, there might be one of these getting sold to you know one of your viewers' doors. So it's pretty exciting. Aussie lawn buffalo. Aussie lawn. We'll work on the name. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have some trademark issues around that. <laughs> So now, um, these are the same buffaloes, but in pots. Yep. Um, we do that, so if we find a good one down the track, we can actually take it around and show people. Yep, um, yep. But otherwise, they're just doing what they're doing. From that, we move on to, I guess this is what you'd call the competitor analysis part of our program, where right, we have yep. the cultivars that we own or we use, yep. or that our, our members use, um, when compared to ones in that category that are already in the marketplace. We right. do a lot of our own research. Um, on this sort of stuff. So this is Zoysius. Um, Sagrange is here, Australis is next to it, and right. then we've got uh, some other cultivars. A research cultivar, Nara Empire, which are on the market now, and another research cultivar up here. So look, we mainly look for seasonal colour differences, thatch differences, seed head production. So the big thing I'm getting from this is we're looking for a warm season grass that keeps really good winter colour. Yeah, that's the key. I'm sort of hearing that a lot, yeah. so I'm sort of thinking... It's really hard to do, Yeah. Uh, but we're getting better at it. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So, particularly in those, the transition zones, they call them in America, I don't know if we call them the same thing here, like Central West New South Wales, even where you're from, yep. Vic, uh, SA, where they still consider cool season as an option it's just so environmentally unsustainable it's not funny you that's can't right keep it that's alive. right yeah. so if we can get these grasses going greener for longer um everyone's yeah. happy well let's so, be honest everyone wants a green lawn in uh, in winter in where winter. possible yeah. yeah that's right and and you know less mowing less fertility yeah. reduce thatch reduce seed head all that sort of stuff it's really really hard to do but we're trying uh, if you can tell the difference between a lot of these you're going pretty well but these are buffaloes yep um so a lot of common ones that are on the market one of them here is struggling we're not and talk about that one too much. So Walter up the top here, which is going pretty well. Yep. Genetically, buffalo grasses, when I say genetically, aesthetically, visually, they're all very, very similar. They do have different traits like disease tolerance, uh, thatch production, seed head production, but the actual aesthetics of them, the leaf structure, they're all very, very similar, similar. which is which is different to zoysia grass, which can be quite different. And then, you know, probably a hot topic right now is the different cooch grass cultivars we've right. got. Right, yes, so, yes, yes, yes. Uh, we've got a number of them now. You're seeing a bunch of them, I know, People that subscribe to your channel will see all the different new ones coming out onto the market. Uh, a but few. Yeah, I've got a few of these. You got a few of these. That one, your... that one, that one, yeah. that one. I've actually got some of that one. So you got all? Oh, you do have the I, M1? I don't have any stadium. Oh. So actually, I've got all of these except one. Right, right. Yep. So in different states. We've got Santa Ana, Agridark, Tiff Tough, Wintergreen, Tahoma, and Stadium Cooch here. So we just do, you know, some analysis on them. Yep. The, the big key for us here is winter colour. Uh, last year we got some really, really good data out yep. of winter. That was quite exciting, uh, seeing how different grasses perform. We're a pretty mild winter here, to be true. Yep. But um, Well, that's actually my plan this season, is to not actually do a right over so. Yep. So my plan this year is to leave the Santa Ana and leave the Tiff Tough as they are. 
and just sort of have a look at how winter colour is, see how the colour holds yeah, up cool. over winter. And yeah. Because let's be honest, if not everyone's going to do a rye over so, so yeah. I figure this year I'm just not going to do it. I'm just going to let them go, feed them up correctly, and see how they go and see how they come back out of uh, dormancy in springtime. That'd be awesome to see in yeah. your climate. Yeah, yeah, that'd be really, really cool. We, yeah, we do a similar thing here, but not to, you got a much bigger plot to work with than we've got here. But Pretty sure your backyard's bigger, Joe. No, I don't know about that. Um, and then jumping away from the competitor. So the competitor analysis for us is just to be reassured more yep. than anything. It takes up a, bit, a fair part of our trial work here, but it's just to know that the grasses we're producing are gonna do well. Yep. I know it's a small sample size. We do lots of these. This is just one example, yep. but it is nice to see our stand out. Yeah, um, yeah, for sure. In amongst and they're trials. all, if they're gonna be fed, they're all fed at the same Everything's time. They're all treated identical. Totally uniform. Yep, sweet. Uh, we've got a full program here that we follow, yep. um, and it keeps things looking nice and, nice and healthy for the most part. Now, Primo, which we mentioned before, yes. the cat's out of the bag, but it's here as well. <laughs> um, Good on you, Joe. Yeah, I know, I ruined that one, didn't I? <laughs> Not at green height here, this is more at a landscape height. Yep. Um, it's pure parent stock right. um, here, so if there does need to be a little bit of primo go out places, we can, yep. on strict research parameters where we don't disclose names, yep. is it can come out of this because this is pure, yeah, pure right. grown yep. on sand. Um, and another cultivar in a similar sort of category, right. which we'll use the code name, which is L1F. Um, 1F. So L1F. L1F, yeah, right. Yep. So that's what we're doing there. We're actually got another zoysia cultivar we're planting out there very soon, but right. we've had zoysia here before and we rotary hoed it. It's been sprayed out for two years. We rotary hoed it the other day and it's just... Yeah, right, look at, this. Look at the rhizomes in it. It's ridiculous, yeah. Like, that's nuts. That's sprayed, that's been dead for two years. Wow, look at that, it hasn't even broken down. No, no, it's a very, very healthy that's, plant. Isn't so. it? Wow. Yeah, it's an interesting. So, that's our research program. Yeah in a nutshell, uh, more or less. If we walk further down here, we start to hit turf farms. Yeah, right. Uh, which we'll probably check out yeah, for um, sure. a little bit later on. Uh, one question. Yeah. I actually got this question in my last video. Mm. A, a, uh, a, a viewer chimed in and was asking if he could sprig zoysia. Yep. Absolutely correct, yes? Absolutely correct, yes. I said it would be slower. It's slow, yeah. yeah. You've got to be a lot more diligent yeah. when you're sprigging zoysia grass. He had no luck the first time, hence he was asking me the question. Yeah. So I said, yes, it can be done, but I'd Any wait, tips? Yeah, a couple. I'd be very, very patient. I'd wait till we're well into the growing season. You need to maximise that short window of... Zoysia grass is from Asia, so it loves today. It yes. loves hot, humid, it loves moisture. You have to wait till you hit that season if you want the best result for sprigging. Yep. You've got to maximise from plant to 30, 40% cover. You've got to really get that happening quickly. Yep. If you do it in the middle of winter or on the shoulder season, you will run into some issues. Right. It's not like cooch kike or even buffalo at that point where it'll just go go yeah it'll be a little bit slower um from sprig yeah so, so yeah even with mine like I, I chose to plug my expansion trial yes i put those in i think it was the end of november yep so i'm i'm sort of working on the fact by the time we get to the first cold cold night so verging on a frost yeah i should just have full coverage and they'll be pretty safe then yeah yeah so, so easy grass yeah. can handle really cold weather yeah um but they're grown all through the southern u.s where it's it gets minus 10 regularly yeah, yep. minus 10 celsius we don't get um, that we don't get that no. and so and they handle them no worries permitted there's enough material on the ground yeah right yeah. Yep. yep and extra wet while establishing yes yes Keep, so, so that's extra water. Point. Yep. yeah lots For and sure. lots of water yep. yep it's a bit warm in here man what a, it was 36 outside we don't have a thermometer but i'm reckon this is 50 in here oh it's got to be it's gonna be close and about a thousand percent humidity very very hot so Obviously this is our hot house or our greenhouse. Yep. So I mentioned before uh, about us bringing grasses from the US into Australia. So that's got to go through quarantine, obviously. Mm -hmm. So you can't just put them in your luggage and bring them into Garing. the country. Yep. Yep. Um, well, you can, but you might get in a bit of trouble. It but won't end well. It won't end well. So what we do is we take them through to the quarantine facility, mm -hmm. which is near Melbourne Airport, yep. basically. And they can be nine to 18 months in quarantine. They spray them with pesticides, they boil them, they do all that sort of stuff to make yep. sure there's no pathogens, no disease in them, no insects. When they come out of quarantine, they come out in a pot like this. Yeah, right, so it's a fair size. It's a fair size, so yep. uh, that's a quarantine tag on it there. Yep. So we get them here, and our job from this pot is to quarantine, uh, quarantine is to propagate them and grow them and analyze them from there. So there's 700 hectares of tiff tuff in the ground in Australia now. That all came out of one single pot. So one of those initially was the entire stock of Tiff Tuff Correct. Australia. Yeah, yes. right. So it's, it's pretty quite, impressive, isn't it? It's quite the process. It, yeah. it provides a number of challenges, 
obviously we've got to make sure our irrigation's working at all yes. times here. Yes. And then when you're propagating, to main, make sure that the 700th hectare is the same cultivar as what's in that pot, because yeah, grasses right. can cross pollinate. It's yes. a pretty yes. important job. We have a certification company called Ausgap that does that. But uh, basically what the, the, the process is here is to keep stock, yep. keep pure stock. So we propagate and transplant and send this all over the country. It's really important for us to have a pure source that we can always come, come back, back to. to. Uh, we also use the bottom shelves here. If we have a grass that we like and we need to propagate it quickly, we can put it into seedling trays, put yeah, it in right. here, yep. and it's grown all that much every week in yeah, here. Yeah, it's nuts. It's, it's really hot in here, isn't it? It's super hot in here, yep. so we won't spend too much more time in here, but... So pretty much zoysias and buffaloes? Zoysias and buffaloes is yep. all that's in here at the moment, and yep. some um, someone's ferns, I don't know whose they are. Tree ferns. Tree ferns, but you can see the buffaloes here. These are the ones I showed you before. Yep. That are just out of quarantine. That's our quarantine tag there. They're still pretty fresh, so if we need to plant more, we can grab stock from here, or yep. 10 years down the track, if we go, oh, that one's actually all right, we can always draw back on pure stock. Yeah, so right. it's really wow. important to keep our nursery here. Yeah. Oh, cool. So there's been quite a lot of discussion about this new zoysia. Yes. And I think I've said it earlier, if not, I'll say it again, the zoysia, was not the zoysia I have. Not the one that you had next to the green. No, no which we've no. now unearthed as... We've unearthed. What prim we? Primo zoysia? Primo, yep. yep. So you said it, not me. Yeah. Um, so this is the Australis, okay? So this is a different different beast again, and mm -hmm. who knows, maybe some may or may not turn up at home and in some stage down the track. We'll just wait and see what happens there. You've probably got some in your pockets already. Did you see that? I didn't see it. I didn't see it. Uh, what can you tell us about it, mate? Uh, so it's a little bit different to the zoysia grasses that are currently on the market, uh, particularly your sagrains, even the, even the Prima that you've got. It's a Japonica, so it's coarser. Yep. Uh, but the beauty about this grass is it has excellent shade tolerance. Mm -hmm. It's nice and easy to look after, and it'll repair quicker. One of the main knocks on zoysia grass is because they're slow growing, it means they're slow to repair. Right. You'll get very similar repairability out of this than what you would to, say, a softleaf buffalo. Right. Or even, you know, probably even a little bit better than that. And we're obviously in pretty heavy shade now, almost yep. full shade, and it's dense and it's nice and it's lush. And it's got that bluey green colour. There's a lot of it in Queensland, and they compare it a lot to the look of Queensland blue. Right. Um, the performance will be a lot better. Yep. Uh, but the look of it's quite nice. Yeah, it's that bluey green. It's very soft. It's soft. I guess you'd call it a medium textured leaf. Yep. So it's much larger than your couches. Yes. Uh, it's much narrower than um, your buffalo. Yes. It's probably a little bit narrower than Kaikuyu. I'd say, yeah. I'd say if you're going to call Kaikuyu medium, this would just be on the narrow side yep. of medium. So somewhere between Kuch and Kaikuyu. Correct. Yep. Yes. That's where this lies. So, um, and it's not, it's not an ultra shortcut grass. No, you, this is at uh, notch four on a rotary now. So yep. we'd say that's at what, 30 mil-ish? Probably a little yeah, bit shorter. Depending on the machine, but yeah. yeah. Depending on the machine. Um, I wouldn't take it too much lower than that. If you're thinking of putting this grass in, I'd think um, if you want something low maintenance that'll grow well in the shade um, and have pretty good wearability, uh, yep. you, you, you consider zoysia australis. Yeah, right. Um, and how, it's pretty good with diseases and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, and... zoysia, zoysia grasses by nature are. Yeah, right. Uh, they're really good with diseases. They're very low nutrient. They have very low nutrient requirements. Yep. We haven't fed this. It's been down for a few months now, and it's got nothing. And the colours, yeah, right. the colours, great. So. Yeah, right. Well, that's um... it's all going well. Yeah, no, I'm I'm sort of um, impressed. It's as I said, it, it's not a probably not a fanatics grass. No, no, I it's wouldn't not, say no. that. No, it, it's more of a I don't know an everyday lawn user's grass. Yep. So you just want something low maintenance that looks good. Yep. Um, they're gonna get it. They're gonna get it from Australia. And what's this like in winter? What's the winter colour like? Uh, it'll go dormant. Yeah. Um, it'll hang on. So as your grasses by nature do hang on pretty good. Yep. So it'll hang on similar to what a soft leaf buffalo would do probably, okay. possibly a little bit better yep but the benefit you get is that blue green color that low nutrient requirement and the yep. great shade tolerance so yeah, yeah right it's a pretty yep. good trade off there yeah yeah yep yeah. yep no for sure mm -hmm. well that's uh... well i really appreciate you taking the time today mate to show us right. all around behind the scenes of what lawn solutions does and i didn't probably realize myself exactly how much goes into behind the scenes so the research the development it's not just a matter of you grabbing some turf and and uh, sharing it with it with your members. There's a lot more behind it than that, and it was something that's really opened my eyes today, so I really appreciate. No, thanks for coming. And that's all right. Um, yeah, it was good to tell yep. the story. Uh, yeah, so people for get sure. a better understanding. So if someone did want to come and have a look, yep. um, you are available, to, but they're probably best to make an appointment or yeah, send you an email. Send us an email, get in touch via the website or by our socials. We're on the highway here, like yep. we're two hours south of Sydney. This is open five days a week. Yep. Uh, 
not seven, five days a week for those who want to stop in. So you're more than welcome. So feel free guys, there's the invitation. Joe's opened the front door. So if you want to come and have a look at this firsthand, send these guys a message, get in contact with them. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'm sure Joe or someone here will be more than happy to give you a little look around and Absolutely. show you all the different bits and pieces. And there's some amazing things happening here. And before you go, yep. Because you're stuffing it in your pockets, how about we give you a bit of Australis, a proper oh, bit of foundation yeah. material so you can put it at your place. So foundation material, so that yeah. is what came from directly from, the, there's nothing more pure then, like I said. There's nothing more pure, now we yep. keep a pure plot like we yep. showed you before and we'll get you some of that so you can put it at your place and have Sweet. some Australis growing. Right, hey, how's that sound? I'm pretty happy with that. Easy. Joe, thank you very much my friend, Thanks, I appreciate Thanks it. Coming. No worries. Anyway guys, have a fantastic weekend, hope you enjoy the episode and we'll catch you next time on the Aussie Lawn. Leg day, bro. Leg day. <laughs> this work. is not how they cut turf normally. This is how they cut it 50 years ago, wasn't it? <laughs> I think so. It's going to be hard to get out. <laughs>